Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IS. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment today we are going to talk about the Elon Musk's SpaceX Starship SN9. This topic is important from the point of view of prelims and also important from the point of view of GS Mains Paper 3. So let's begin with the topics of discussion that we are going to look at. First of all, we will talk about Y News, then we will talk about SpaceX, the private agency which deals with rocket making and of course space flights. We will talk about missions to moon and Mars, commercial flights to space, the advantages, the disadvantages and way forward in the midst of the segment I am going to give you a pre-based question for which if you know the answer, kindly comment in the comment segment. So let's begin with why in news because you see Starship SN9 which has been a prototype heavy lift rocket it has suffered a setback in the sense that it exploded when it landed now otherwise it was successful because it went up hovered for a little while and when it came to landing it exploded this particular rocket is meant and it was meant to transport people as well as cargo to and back from the earth all right so if we talk about this particular mission this was developed by the private agency of billionaire elon musk spacex let's know about spacex for a while so space exploration technology scorp it's an american aerospace manufacturer and space transportation service company and headquartered in hawthorne california and it was founded in 2002 by elon musk now this company had been founded with the goal of encouraging space flights and commercial flights, space tourism and also a very ambitious project of colonization of Mars. Alright, so be very careful with this particular phrase as well. Colonization of Mars, Mars means basically sending people from Earth as well as cargo in order to build colonies of human beings, of human species there. So this has been an ambitious project. If we talk about the different rockets of SpaceX, they are Falcon 9. Now, this is a reusable two-staged rocket. It is meant to transport people as well as cargo. And it is the world's first reusable orbital Earth rocket. If we talk about Falcon Heavy, now this is the better version of Falcon 9. It is capable of carrying the payload twice as heavy as Delta IV heavy. You have to be very careful with the comparisons. Delta IV heavy. Then comes Dragon. Dragon is capable of carrying seven people to and from Earth back and forth. And if we talk about the others, there are of course the Starship SN8 and SN9. Now, if we talk about these rockets, these rockets are actually being made in order to enhance space tourism, commercial flights, sending cargo, right? So, this is a very ambitious company. Moving on to different missions to Moon and Mars, we have to be careful with which agency is launching which kind of project, alright? So, note it down or take a screenshot. NASA's Artemis 1 late 2020, Artemis 1 is basically a test on two fronts. It is the inaugural launch of NASA's space launcher system. Now this will be the heaviest rocket in the world and literally move the agency's deep space exploration missions forward. And first real deep space test of the Orion crew capsule which will spend six days in the lunar orbit. So if we talk about space exploration versus deep space exploration space exploration is basically exploring those areas which have already been explored or they are lying closer to the serve or to the space area of earth deep space exploration actually lies ahead of that where it has never been explored or it actually is lying further apart from the near areas of earth all right moving on if we talk about China, how can we forget about Shanghai? So China's remarkably successful Shanghai's lunar exploration program, it shows no signs of slowing down. Now, if successful Shanghai 5 will be China's third successful 
spacecraft landing on the moon so if you want to talk about which agency or which country launches different products or projects beg your pardon so shange belongs to china and artemis belongs to nasa here's your prelims question so india's chandrayaan 3 this will be india's third lunar mission and its second attempt at landing spacecraft on the moon your prelims question is that which you have to comment for in the comment segment in which year chandrayaan 1 and chandrayaan 2 were launched and what was the name of the lander and rover rover which belong to chandrayaan 2 all right moving on russia's luna 25 26 and 27 these are the different months and years in which they are going to be launched the last mission under the luna program was in the year 1976 this could be asked in your prelims exam be very careful with that and this was when the world still had a soviet union eager to make sure it got a stake in the 21st century moon rush russia is resurrecting the program with a slate of new missions focused on enabling future mining operations so back then there was a tussle between usa and russia to reach to the moon and now so that it doesn't feel left out it doesn't lag behind russia is again catching with the pace tianwen 1 which is china's mars rover and orbital mission now we are moving to mars china's first mars mission will search for pockets of water beneath the surface that could host life hope that's the united arab emirates first mission to mars so the hope mars mission will build a complete picture of martian climate now insight nasa's insight mission is studying the internal layering of mars to learn more about how planets are made exomars tgo the european space agency's exomars tgo trace gas orbiter it searches for evidence of methane and other trace atmospheric gases that could be signatures of active biological or geological processes now its shia pareli probe crash landed maven maven is nasa's mars atmosphere and volatile evolution mission it has provided first of its kind measurements to address key questions about mars climate and habitability and improve understanding of dynamic processes in the upper martian atmosphere as well as ionosphere of course how can we forget about india's first mars mission that is the mangalyaan now it was primarily a technology demonstration mission that carries small 15 kg payload of five science instrument it takes stunning full globe pictures of mars so as we can see all the countries are in a race to reach to either moon or mars and now private companies are also getting into the loop along with that right moving on if we talk about commercial flights to space what is that basically now any flight to space that is commercial in nature that is not for the welfare of the human beings at large not actually just to show the national prowess but to commercialize capitalize and taken as a business model that is known as commercial flights to space so if we talk about it noted down space tourism recreation space travel either on established government owned vehicles such as russians soyuz and the iss or on vehicles fielded by private companies it's known as space tourism since the flight of the world's first space tourist american businessman dennis tito on apollo 28 2001 Now, space tourism has gained new prominence as more suborbital and orbital tourist opportunities are becoming available. There are several different types of space tourism. There are orbital, suborbital, lunar space tourism, of course belonging to different orbits. Space tourism has been defined as any commercial activity offering customers or consumers any direct or indirect in experience with space travel. The official definition given by the world tourist organization of tourism and the un statistics committee in 1994 reads thus the activities of persons traveling to and staying in places outside their usual environment for not more than one consecutive year of leisure if we talk about the advantages of it there are certain advantages that it appeals to high public profile people 
that means it can be easily commercialized and because the elitist culture supports such kind of tourism it would lead into technological innovation because because it appeals to the elitist class people and different startups will be much more appealed towards actually accessing the profits so it will give a boost to technological innovation and high investor interest will also be there if a particular startup will remain promising will be seemingly promising the investment would be made and the culture of space tourism would be stimulated hence if we talk about the disadvantages first is steep initial setup costs now this could be possible only for those countries which have a robust startup system and a robust system of providing incentives tax benefits subsidies to different private enterprises when it comes to space exploration private space exploration second is hostile environment we do not know a lot about even earth how can we know more about about the outer space in order to send tourists there that's the second disadvantage space garbage as more and more commercialization of space would gather momentum what will happen it would result in space garbage right and unethical in nature do humans actually have the right to explore places which need to be kept still and they shouldn't be explored enough in order to not upset the balance of the universe that's unethical in nature why should space be used for commercialization and capitalization that's another question if we talk about the way forward first is agreement agreement should be made between the countries which take into account a legal backing with respect to space tourism right and every country should be every country as well as every private company should be held accountable for their deeds and for their innovations that it does not impact negatively the entire space right an ethical approach should be established an ethical trajectory should be established so that proper exploration could happen with keeping in mind the balance of the nature and the balance of the space and safety concerns should definitely be addressed because we do not know a lot about the space what are there what are the concerns that are going to be there should also be addressed and after that only a proper space exploration when it comes to commercialization and space tourism should be taken all right so that's it for today tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching